Hello, I'm taking on a challenge to be every playable Nintendo published game. Welcome to the next episode. The next games are Versus Balloon Fight and Balloon Fight. We've got another pair of NES and Versus System games this time around. Similar to Pinball and Golf, Iwata was a primary programmer for this one, as Nintendo once again decided to work alongside HAL Laboratory in the development of this one. The gameplay of this one is clearly inspired by Joust, a 1982 arcade game made by Williams Electronics. This similarity is no coincidence, as Iwata had already worked on a Joust port for the Famicom, although that one ended up not being able to be released until quite a few years later. I guess they decided to take the experience Iwata gained while making the Joust port and apply it to a new game that would be similar. You'll notice that I mentioned the Versus System version of Balloon Fight before the NES version, and that is intentional. The arcade version of this game predates the NES version, and, once again, the Versus System version released in the US before the NES even launched in the West. Since it released first, I played the Versus System version first, although as we will soon see, the two versions are ultimately pretty similar. While I have played the NES version before, this was my first time seeing the arcade game. This version of the game is essentially just the normal mode from the NES version with a few changes. Your objective is to take out all the enemies. Honestly, I'm not even sure why we're trying to get rid of these enemies. The manual for the game provides no explanation as to why we're trying to pop each other's balloons. To actually defeat an enemy, you must first pop their balloon, then hit them again while they parachute downwards. Doing so will cause them to sink into the water, and a bubble will rise out which you can pop for extra points. If you don't hit them while they are parachuting, one of two things can happen. If they land in the water, they will still end up defeated. However, if they make it to land, they will fill up another balloon and start flying again. It takes a few seconds for them to fill up the new balloon though, and you can safely take them out during this time too. In order to actually pop the enemy balloons, you must be positioned above them and run into them. Similarly, they can pop your balloons if they touch you from above instead. Unlike the enemies, however, you have two balloons that get refreshed after three rounds, although losing your second balloon is an immediate life lost. You don't get to parachute to safety like the enemies do. Once you lose your first balloon, flying becomes more difficult, and you have to mash the flying button even more to stay afloat. On that note, the physics here feel a bit different from the NES version. You feel a bit heavier here, and since there's no auto flight button in this version, you end up mashing the flight button quite a bit to stay afloat. The screen actually scrolls vertically in this version too, meaning you'll be mashing even more if you need to travel to the top part of the stage. One of my biggest gripes with this version actually has to do with the screen scrolling, as I found the camera to be pretty rough when you travel to the edge of the screen. This doesn't matter a ton when moving downwards, since that is generally more safe due to the way the balloon popping works, but moving up was always a risk, since an enemy could pop up out of nowhere and hit your balloon before you could react. I just wish they moved the camera up sooner when you were moving upwards. Because of this, I found it generally better to make your way to the top of the stage as soon as possible, as it is always better to have the high ground against your opponents. In this game's defense though, this is one of the first games in the challenge to actually feature a scrolling screen, so they were probably still figuring out the best way to do it. In addition to the enemies, there's also flippers that can bump you around, and electricity that gets shot out of the clouds. These can come out pretty suddenly, and sometimes they move around the stage super fast. These bolts of electricity are definitely one of the most dangerous hazards in the game, as they take you out in one hit, and are another reason why the screen scrolling can make moving around the stage super dangerous. Finally, there's also a fish that jumps out and tries to eat you if you get too close to the water. There wasn't usually a good reason to be down that low anyway, so he wasn't really much of a problem for me. There's one more thing I want to cover before going over my runs. While I never played it, this one features a simultaneous two-player mode similar to the NES version. Since the Versus system supported two screens, this meant that each player saw their own position on the map despite the presence of a scrolling screen. Even though I didn't touch this mode, I thought it was worth mentioning since it would seemingly explain why the NES version has no scrolling screen while this one does. I wasn't really sure what my goal for this one would be going into it, so I initially just decided to see how far I could get and see if I could learn anything. Since I largely knew what I was doing in this game, I beat the first phase with no trouble at all. On the second phase though, I got greedy at the start and ended up getting demolished by one of the enemies. Somehow he popped my second balloon almost immediately after the first one. Ouch. While I beat the rest of this level pretty easily, I lost two more lives on phase three. I guess this one was taking a bit for me to get used to after all. After this third phase, you enter a bonus stage where a bunch of balloons are coming out of pipes and you need to pop them all. I didn't pop all of them, but that's not too big of a deal since all that means is that I missed out on some points. 
That being said, if you do manage to pop all the balloons, you get a pretty big bonus added to your score. After this, Phase 4 began and I immediately noticed the color of the stage changed. This, plus the fact that the platform layout of each stage kept changing, made me wonder if there was a good point where the stages would loop that would be a good goal. After another three phases, I was sent back to the bonus stage, and once again, after this, the platforms changed color. While I made it through three more phases in this section, things were starting to look rough, as I had no extra lives remaining. After this, at phase 10, the colors changed once again, and it was something I hadn't seen yet. Finally, here, I was taken out by one of the enemies, and the run was over. At this point, I already made it to the top of the preset leaderboard. While I think this could make for a good goal, I did some research and found out that the stage layout started to repeat after phase 15, which I hadn't reached yet. While I had almost seen all the colors on my first run, there was one final color variation to see, the yellow variation. On this next run, I made it to phase 13 and saw this final variation. Despite only having a few lives remaining, I also managed to beat level 15 and the stage layouts finally started to repeat. I think there's actually technically even more variations as they add more obstacles to each of the stages at this point, but I was content getting to the point where the overall layout started to repeat. I still decided to keep going though, and I made it to phase 19 before losing my last life. With that, Versus Balloon Fight was complete. On to the NES version. While this one does feature an all new mode, I still started with the main mode first. This mode is pretty similar, although they've completely removed the vertical scrolling, likely because both players needed to share the same screen in the two-player mode. By consequence, this has an effect on the bonuses too, since now the balloons have less time on the screen. Controls are a bit different here too. The physics feel a bit floatier, and more importantly, they've made it so that holding down the B button will cause your character to flap rapidly, removing the need to mash. While the background changes after every three stages, similar to the arcade version, they removed the yellow palette, meaning you only have to win 12 stages to see every variant in this version. After beating stage 12, it actually skips past the first color scheme and just repeats stages 4 through 12 over and over. As such, my goal this time around was to beat 12 stages instead of 15. Despite having half the amount of lives, in general, I think this one is a bit easier than the arcade version. The smaller screen can make things more hectic, but the game feels less heavy, and the removal of the poor camera scrolling helps a lot. On my first try, I had already made it past stage 12 with all three of my lives remaining. I made it all the way to stage 21 before losing my last life and ending the run. Up next was the balloon trip mode. This mode is an endless auto-scroller to the left. It's a little weird that you're going from right to left, but remember, screen scrolling was pretty new at the time, so I guess the left to right convention wasn't totally established yet. You might even think this one is noteworthy, because it would appear to be the first NES title to feature horizontal scrolling. However, because I'm doing two games at once here, there's actually another notable horizontal scrolling NES title released before this version of Balloon Fight that I haven't gotten to yet. In this mode, your objective is to simply pop balloons and avoid lightning bolts that are covering the screen. Oh, and that fish from before is back if you get too close to the water. Also, if you pop bubbles that float up, the screen will momentarily freeze for you to easily collect more balloons. While this mode is endless, your rank is displayed in the top right corner. As you gain points, your rank goes up. Getting rank 1 makes for an obvious goal for this game, so that's what I targeted here. On my first run, I accidentally started to move way too fast and ran straight into a lightning bolt. If you get hit once, your score is reset and you have to go all the way back to the beginning. My second run ended up going much better. The key strat for this one is just to take it slowly. I made it all the way to rank 1 this time, accomplishing my goal. I kept going though, and I actually saw another mechanic that I didn't know existed. I didn't realize why it happened at the time, but if you collect 20 balloons in a row, the color of the balloons change and they increase in value. Finally, at just over 60,000 points, a lightning bolt scraped my behind and the run was over. With that, Balloon Fight was complete. On to the review. I thought both of these games were fine, but I personally didn't find them to be especially interesting. The core mechanic works well enough, but there's just not a whole lot of variety to be had here. I might have praised the game for having a unique method of combat if I didn't know about the existence of Joust. I think the NES version is probably superior, as the larger screen is ultimately a hindrance in the Versus System version. It's also nice that the NES version has another mode, even if Balloon Trip is relatively simple. All in all, if you like high score chasers, you'll probably have fun with this one, but there's just not a whole lot for me that makes me interested in going back to these ones. I gave both versions of the game a 6 out of 10. Thanks for watching the video. If you want to see more of these in the future, make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you won't miss out on the next one. Also leave a like if you enjoyed it, since it will help the channel grow and motivate me to continue this series. I hope I will see you in the next step of my quest to beat every Nintendo game.